I was looking for some good devotionals today, today because I'd kind of gone through my devotional of last year. And I found this online. Um, and Sharon Janes wrote this. And it's on iBelieve.com. She was talking about, um, she had gone in to get her eyes checked this week and had to get all the lenses changed. And you know how you sit there and they change all the lenses and ask you, can you see this row? Can you see that row? Blah, blah, blah. And she was saying how it was kind of stressing her out. And um, she thought of the scripture verse. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Second Corinthians four and eight and nine. She was thinking of that verse. And she sat in her living room afterwards thinking about her eye appointment that she had. And I consequently had an eye appointment last week. So I, I kind of understood where she was at. Um, they put the drops in your eyes and you're, you're just like, wow, like, you know, I just want this over with. Mind you, I have a really good eye doctor. So it was pleasant. But she's sitting in the room in her living room with, the, with low lights on, getting her eyes to adjust. And she was thinking about things. And she thought about that scripture verse. And she thought about the uh, Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was a man whose physical eyesight, it waned with the physical, uh, with the passing years, but his spiritual eyesight remained exceptionally clear. During this time preaching the gospel, he was flogged, whipped, and stoned many times. He had been shipwrecked, bitten by a snake, outcast, and ridiculed. Several times he was in lockdown in one place or another. Can we identify with that? Some of his life was spent under the house arrest in Rome, as well as chained to a guard in the dirty dungeon, all for preaching the gospel. And yet it was during one of those stints in prison that Paul wrote the most joyful book in the New Testament, Philippians. Now, we can't imagine what he went through. I can't imagine oh, being bit by a snake and outcast and, oh. So he wrote this, Paul wrote this, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to to proclaim the gospel without fear, Philippians 1, 12 and 14. So you know what? Paul didn't see himself stuck in prison. He didn't see himself in that bad way. He didn't see himself sitting in the chair, stressing over the, the, the eye doctor's visit because of Jesus. He saw himself as stationed in prison for Jesus. He didn't see himself chained as to a Roman guard. He saw the Roman guard chained to him. The guards had to listen to Paul talk about Jesus day in and day out. And Paul had time to write letters to all the churches, something he might not have done had he been free to travel. So you know what? This lockdown time that we're in, this stressful wondering what's going to happen next, guess what? It's our time to do the Lord's work. It's our time to listen to his voice. It's our time to persevere even when the screen freezes and carry on with the gospel of Christ. It's our time to talk about the Lord. It's time in this lockdown period, we've been given this grace to be able to do things that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. There's a lot of people, I'm sorry, but they do complain about the lockdown and how this or that. And sometimes I'm I get frustrated listening to it because I'm thinking, this is our golden opportunity. We knew this was going to happen. It's been foretold in the scriptures. We were going to go through some perilous times. And this is nothing. This is not perilous. We're in our own homes. Those that are suffering, though, I, I can't say with COVID, that is something that we must be mindful of. So when we're in our lockdown, we can pray for those that are struggling and that are having to be in the hospital because of sickness or whatever. So this is our time. This is our time to pray for them. It isn't easy for some people right now. You know, I'm talking about in general, life is good for, for some of us, but there's a good majority, life is just not good. So I pray that we can pray this prayer. 
Heavenly Father, forgive me for grumbling and complaining about my circumstances. Help me to flip the lens and look at my life through the lens of your sovereignty. And I know my circumstances will work to mold and make me more like Jesus. Help me to have joy in the journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I think that's what we need to do. We need to pray that. We need to pray that God would just help us, help us to continue to carry on. Um, my own life, I've had lots of setbacks this year, stuff I never even thought. As you know, I all that stuff with fracturing my ankle and lots of things. But I just decided that, you know what, I'm going to make the best of this, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to do and pursue and be all that Jesus Christ has called me to be. I encourage you to do the same thing. Some people might think this show is just nothing, you know, it's just a ho-dunk show, maybe. It's not professional. But we have professional singers to sing for the Lord through the Holy Spirit. And that's what counts. And these people that have come on here today are singing because of Christ and through the Holy Spirit. And they are beautiful. And their voices are beautiful. And we know that. Anyways, enough going on about uh, about things. Sometimes I think I'm not a preacher. But then when I start, I don't know when to stop. So <laughs> I'm going to stop. <laughs> We have uh, one last song. Trevor Baker is just a wonderful, seasoned singer-songwriter who's written so many songs, so many beautiful, beautiful songs that you can't imagine. And this last couple of CDs, he's been reading, writing more about his life, I believe. And this song is called God Red Between the Tear Stains. And as Trevor sings this song, if you're feeling that you need God to hear you or you're feeling like you're, you are kind of, you are kind of complaining about life and the way things are. I pray that you listen to these words and be ministered to because God loves you and he wants you to know that he's listening to you. He's, a, he's, he's reading the stuff you write down. He's listening to every thought. He knows what's going on in your life. He is your best friend. And he reads between every tear stain. He collects all your tears in a bottle. And he knows. Enjoy the song. God bless you. God read between the tear stains on the note she wrote last night Dear Lord was all you jotted down But you worded it just right He understood the meaning Even though the pain remains You may have only said two words But God read between the stains You tried to sleep but couldn't Your mind was spinning round you were counting through the memories And the bad was all you found Afraid you shouldn't tell him He may not hear one who complains But God knew what you were saying Cause he read between the stains You paced around from room to room Sorting through your life Trying to count the good things but the hurt cut like a knife The morning greeted you with clouds You know the feeling when it rains Your letter hadn't dried But God read between the stains You grabbed a pad but nothing came Just like the night before Dear Lord, then you tapped your pen But there was nothing more when we're overcome with burdens That's when God takes the reins So don't worry about the letter Cause God read between the stains God read between the tear stains On the note you wrote last night Dear Lord was all you jotted down But you worded it just right He understood the meaning even though the pain remains You may have only said two words But God read between the stains A 
Think of all the others who have walked upon this earth, who have lost men and wives, watched their children die at birth. And the pain of separation as couples boarded different trains, poured their hearts out on a pillow, but God read between the stains. To those who trust He's able to make all things work for good, when you feel this world has let you down and no one's understood. God can heal your heavy heart. He's got lots of letter frames. So go ahead and write him. He can read between the stains. God read between the tear stains on the note she wrote last night. Dear Lord, was all you jotted down, but you worded it just right. He understood the meaning, even though the pain remained. You may have only said two words, but God read between the stains. You may have only said two words, but God read between the stains. God read between the tear stains. I had the privilege of making that video for Trevor. Just a sweet, kind man. And uh, pray for him. Pray for all that are ministering. That um, are we can't go out now, obviously, and, and do anything live. But um, online or whatever we're doing, just, you know, lift us up. And lift all those that you saw tonight that sang. Because they've given their gifts to the Lord. I'm going to try to play the song. Oh, maybe it's gone now, so I can't. I was going to play the song that um, Bev Woodcock wrote. And I told her it was going to be played tonight. But that's the one that froze froze the entire screen. So um, so next time we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll play that song for Bev. Anyways, God bless you all. And uh, you all encourage me in such wonderful, warm ways. Be blessed and know that you're not alone. Jesus is Lord and he's here and he sees all. God bless you and have a great night and we'll see you next time. Gospel Music with Friends Online will return. Bye for now. <laughs>